being like this. We've got one, two, three. That's what we call triaxle loading. We want is the load to be two two axes or whatever, so there and there. And we kind of talked about this, but most of the carabiners are designed slightly to move everything to the spine of the carabiner because that's the strongest part. So, uh, you know, so you could probably get maybe four carabiners in here, and then that would be about it. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to clip in <clears throat> some, something else somewhere else. And just get awkward. Enough. There's one other place you can clip in here. You've got a girth hitched uh, beaner or just your regular knot for your master point. You can clip in up here. This is a little bit twisted though. So. Uh, it goes through there. So above the knot or the girth hitched beaner is what we call the shelf. So you just need to take one strand from every one of these pieces and clip one, one of each of those strands. The only caveat with using the shelf is there has to be something in the focal point. So let's just redo this with just a regular sling so I can show you that properly. Okay, so remember when we're using the shelf, if, if we are gonna, going to use it, we need to take one strand from each piece. And if we are gonna use the shelf, the main caveat, other than that, uh, what I just talked about, is there always has to be something clipped to the, the focal point here. Because if there's nothing in here and you load this significantly, the knot can roll right off the end and then this falls off into oblivion, whatever's attached to it. So to prevent that, you just have something in here. And if that knot did roll, it'd roll it there and it, it wouldn't be able to go past this until something broke. Uh, yeah. And I'll just show you, if you're like, you know, why can't you just do that? Well, if this piece, if this gets cut, it's not, it's not redundant, and this comes off. So that's why we grab one strand from each. Perfect. Cool, I think that's about enough on like, the gear anchors. Does anybody have any questions? Wow. Uh, when did this start to become more popular than with people? Doubling up on anything? Uh, I mean, that's been like kind of a standard for yeah. A lot of times you have to climb you know, through the tree line to get to your route or repel through some tree line terrain. And also, is we're on the island, so the mountains are that tall, so, you know, we're like alpine climbing, but there's still some trees sometimes. So, uh, we need to know how to make anchors off of them. Some of the key things when you're making anchors off trees, and this is where the ideals or like the anchor building principles kind of go up the window a little bit, because we will make single point anchors off trees. But they have to be, you know, as big as your thigh or bigger. And you should really look around the base of the tree and make sure they're well rooted. If it's, you know, as big as my thigh, but you can see all the roots, it's all eroded and the roots are all exposed. And, you know, try and look for something else. Then also look up the tree and uh, see if it's alive. If it's dead, then, you know, maybe it's good to look for a different one. And then the other thing I'll do is just, you know, give it a good shake, especially if it's a smaller one. 
if you get a good shake, you can also see if like the ground's moving where the roots are, and especially on the small ones. And uh, that'll be kind of my assessment. And then it's pretty simple. All you do is basically just basket hitch it. So, you know, this tree I'm not going to use need a whole uh, 240 sling. I could use a 120. So just make this smaller by making it into a loop and keep your uh, keep your sling or your cordelette down low so you're not levering the tree. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. so. If you had a bit more sling you could could tie a master point in here that wouldn't be incorrect. It's not strictly necessary, but... Does it just help if you're moving from side to side a bit more? The only reason I would do this is, you know, the only reason I can see why you would do this is if you're worried at maybe about some rock rolling down or something, at least you have two strands that are um, tied together now. So if one of them got cut, you'd still have an anchor. But if you don't have to knot in here and one of the strands gets cut, then you mm -hmm. no longer have an anchor. Mm -hmm. So if I cut one of those now, it could just slide it. It would all just come apart, right? Mm -hmm. so. But that's kind of a real what if situation. Yeah. Okay, that's so. Fun. I hook them together. I mean, you could you could hook many different trees together, but probably do this. You know, you're probably just going to end up doing a girth hitch. That this, in this scenario, since they're like this, uh, I'm just going to pretend this is downhill. If I wanted to use these trees and go that way, I'd have to have two really long slings because. Uh, if I had two short slings, what's our problem here? Those are 90 degree angles. Yeah, exactly. The angles are not good, so we're going to have force multiplication. So. Does that just mean there's twice as much, or approximately twice as much force on each point? It can be more than twice as much. Yeah. I'll try and look up. I have, I have a diagram that illustrates it a bit. And, you know, <clears throat> as the angle gets bigger, the more force, force multiplication you have. So we'll just pretend this is downhill just because of the material that I have with me. Uh, I guess I'll use my cordelette. <coughs> you know, if I was hooking two trees together, it would often be because they're quite small and maybe you don't meet that size kind of uh, size. Requirement, I guess. But requirement. Yeah. But if I put more than one together, then I could, I can uh, make up for that. I could tie this around the tree, or I, could, I might have enough to just here, pitch another, another one. Just remember when you do your overhand to tighten each strand. Now that we have two pieces, we want to have a, a master point. So either that girth hitch beaner or overhand or figure eight on a bite. Because then we create our redundancy there. Yeah, so we do something like that. You could tie this around, not put that in, tie it around there. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Awesome. Sure. Have you used this one very much yourself when you're on the tree line area? Uh, I've definitely used it for more more so like when I've been climbing in like say Squamish. Yeah. And here, here's a video. 
are part of the woods here. Yeah, it's yeah. just like here, right? But you're doing like multi-pitch climbs, so sometimes you just need to build anchors out of trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so much going out and out climbing, but you could run into that. So theoretically, I could descend off this tree right now. Although safer would be boom, right like that. So if there are potential hazards, one rope were to break, there would still be a backup. I'm not redundance. Check the tree, looking lively. Bigger than my thigh. Seems all right. Might move this down lower. Yeah, there's a little more. And I would consider moving this down lower at the back even. Right. Boulder hitching. And then just to make it even a little more secure, just open this up and bring it you know, down here or whatever so it's I, I would like to be slightly more in cut back there but right i think it could work as long as you make sure that your direction of pull is, is all in down the whole time and you don't come up at all mm -hmm. so i'd keep that in mind if i was going to use it and i'd make sure i was down here rigging my rappel and starting to rappel from down here okay right and then also, you know, trying to use webbing if we have it available instead of cord because it's more cut resistant. Yes. And you'll have webbing and whatnot for uh, Mount Cain, right? Yeah. So make sure not that the knot there would be the tip. I don't know where around that might do. Okay, quick. Descent rappel here. Yeah, it works. Perfect. So the rest of the adventure will be at Kane, Mount Kane, one of the Vancouver Island ski resorts in the summer is probably a lot of times the guests who you're climbing with they they might know how to blade and they might they can probably maybe touch a bigger leaf, maybe a full pitch. So probably not gonna be able to do this. A lot of them. Some some are quite good, but there's a lot to not work. And then when you get a little better at it, you can go a bit faster. You generally don't want to like coil 60 meters of rope like this onto your, yourself, um, just because it gets a bit uncomfortable. But it's just for a short distance. It's fine. Okay, so <clears throat> then to uh, finish the coils or tie them off, you take a bite of rope, you go through your fillet loop, okay, and then take that bite and you're going to go around everything, around the back of everything. And then take that bite again, and you're gonna do an overhand around the rope that's coming out.
and then now if you're uh if you fall since you went through your belay loop and you, you should kind of especially when you're just learning this you should give a pull and make sure it's pulling on your belay loop and not cinching the coils around your neck because you tied it off wrong if you fall and you get it wrong you know you tighten around you, around you so if you fall it's going to tighten up on your belay loop if you're going to be you know using this length of rope for a long time and not changing it in you know five minutes you should probably just clip it off so this doesn't come undone and then uh, you're good to go you want to change the, the length of rope or maybe you want the whole the whole length of rope untie pull that out and then just get it back on your neck like that. Uh, you don't want to just take the coils off and flop them on the ground because then it'll turn into a big knot like it was telling you. Just take them off one at a time and drop them down. What is this for generally? Shortening the, the rope. So we're going to get uh, into more of the context of why you short the rope and, and whatnot right away here. Fair enough. Climb up, but this is all I have for bracing. You can just hook a beaner in to like your belay loop and just move a little bit that way. Okay. Uh, maybe not quite that much, but something like that and it'll help realign it but if, if you're trying to modify it and use stuff like this then mm -hmm. maybe you need to start thinking that maybe it's not quite the right application yeah you may need to build an anchor proper but, secure right. yeah so cool. belay mm -hmm. is the seated hip belay mm -hmm. theoretically it'd be low but no. terrain belay is around an object yeah, so that's a good technique to use here if you just, you know, you can't use the train blade to pinch it. Or it'll be a little bit of a view. Okay, so what do you guys think about uh, girth hitching here? Any thoughts? About the way you said it? Yeah. It reminded me of my ropes course and um, how you also use the two carabiners where you set them, set the actual clips opposite from each other. Yeah. Also, it's at level alignment, so it's. Would it be better to have an adjustable or better to have the extra support? What's that? Pardon me? Uh, better to have it more adjustable or better to have it locked in so it doesn't do that? Uh, what, what's this specifically you're asking about? I mean, if you shift it like this. Uh, the anchor? Yes. Uh, maybe, yeah. I, I'm basically, gonna, we're going to repel right here, so yeah. it's pretty much in line with where it's going to go. Is that, is that what you're asking about? Yep. Yeah. yeah, and just the... Uh, would it be more optimal to have the one on the uh, hitch? Oh, instead of having the girth hitch there? Girth hitch, yes. Yeah, I just used the girth hitch because I didn't have a lot of beaners with me. Oh, yeah. And so just girth hitched it. Um, 
Yeah, find yeah, the Girthus under there. Thing. I checked the mountain. Yeah. Well, I even checked the bolts because we need to check the integrity of uh, as part of our acting room, right? So, uh, with the bolts, things can come on up on the top side, maybe if you need a better view. But, yeah. Um, with bolts, you don't you don't need a course or anything to like bolt the sport root or put in bolts at the top of the climb. So anybody can go do it. So you should probably just check and make sure mm -hmm. at least they're... I don't actually use them that often. But if you read on the internet, you're gonna, if you read on like some blog on the internet, you're gonna hear all about these and like how they're so good. They are good, but to an that anchor is mm -hmm. just as good. Sure enough. Everybody's, people get really worried about having like strong enough anchors. Um, so I think that's probably why a lot of people like this because everything's uh, quadrupled on here. Mm -hmm. But we just need things doubled. So one advantage, the other reason I use this here is it's going to be repelling over there, but this anchor's on this side, so uh, this thing's a little bit, has a little bit more, um, it can self-equalize, but it still has the mm -hmm. stopper knot, so we're limiting extension. One thing with this is just be sure not to, you just need to grab two strands, any two strands, okay? The other good thing, I, I do use this alpine guiding sometimes, like if I'm uh, lowering, say, two guests down a big ice face, then I might give them one of these pre-set up like this, and then they can put in two ice screws wherever I stop them. And they can clip into just two of these, and it's, it'll equalize. It doesn't matter where they put their ice screws. That's kind of the main time I use these. So Very that's cool. kind of a different like, guiding application. You just want to grab two of these. If you grab, if you do clip on here, right? If, if one piece fails, your your whole anchor fails, right? So Some guides. Uh, I'm just going to physically run my hand down the setup to check it. Often this is, you know, it's not a soft anchor like this. It's something that's going to be left behind, like some wrap rings or something like that. But this is what we have for today. So anchor, all that's good. We know it's good to hear because I checked and I set it up. But basically make sure those are locked, rope set it through. I'm going to run my hand down. I'm going to see that there's two threaded through here, two coming out, and they're actually around the beaners. That's where sometimes if you have a really fat rope, um, you can thread it through here and, and maybe you don't thread it through the beaner, at least one strand, but it'll stay in the tube device because it's quite fat and stiff. And then as soon as you wait it, it rips out and you fall. So just two, 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 and I'm going to squeeze check this. I'm gonna check the leash, back my harness. And it's good. We haven't really checked harnesses because we haven't um, actually been hanging in them. So I just do that, and then I do one final check before I end my leash. I'm gonna step up towards the anchor. Do you need the pressers, press hook as well, or yeah. just the anchor? Uh, if you're, there's a couple. Normally, yes. Um, we're not gonna have a press hook because I have this backup. Right, but, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. There's two ways to repel and still have a backup. Which, um, so one, you have a prusik that we'll use in the next couple days, or someone's down at the bottom giving you a fireman's belay. So they basically hold the rope, and if you slip, they just pull it, and they can stop you, no problem. Right. Okay? Cool. So we'll, we'll look at that in the next So this is kind of like the top version of the bottom. Uh, yeah, or so just in that a... scenario, the first minister would repel down with a prusik backup, and then they would just give everybody else fireman blades so they don't right. have to repel the prusik, which, you know, takes time to set it up, and it's usually, you know, if you're guiding, you don't want anybody using prusiks because they're super slow at repelling in the first place, and then they put a prusik on, and they're even slower. So so you just repel down Understand. Yep. a fireman's blade. Yep. Right now, we just don't have a lot of time, so we're just gonna like repel, get used to the motion, being on the rope. We haven't done it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it in subsequent days. 
So my last check after like kind of running my hand down and physically checking everything, squeeze check, all that. I'm gonna step up towards the anchor and then tighten this up. So right up, right up. And then I'm gonna hold the brake. And you can hold it now. Here's yeah, two hands on the brake strand. And I'm gonna lean into my uh, on my rappel vise. And now I've I've put all the weight on the rappel system. I, I just lean into it and make sure it doesn't come apart. I'm still attached with my leash, so this is kind of my second check. And yeah, it works, so that's good. You're gonna repel now, so. Cool. Um, so. so yeah, once I've done those two things, I'm happy. And I'm ready, ready to go. So, pop your leash off. One more thing, so often you, you leave that beaner in, but you do leave an end of your rope. And uh, if you're doing really long repels, like two, like 60 meter repels, so two ropes tied together, so you can repel a full 60. You have your rope tied together with a knot, and then you just clip the rope. Um, you just clip the rope that you're gonna pull when everybody is repelled, because Presumably there's a knot on one side of this or the other because you have two ropes tied together. You just clip the one that, uh, the, the knot side so you can pull it without it jamming into your uh, wrap ring or in the carabiners. The reason that's important is sometimes there's a lot of friction on the pole and you can't tell if the rope's stuck or you just, it's just, you pulled the wrong side and it's jamming into your anchor. So if you clip this, the last person, uh, onto the side you need to pull, at least you know you're pulling the right one and if it's not moving, it's just stuck. And you didn't just pull the wrong one, you're not just jamming it in there more. So it also just keeps it out of the way. So. Yeah, lean back a little more. There you go. Uh, I guess one other thing with the long hair. Really tied. No, just, just don't get it in your belay device. If you don't want to tie it up, I'm not going to tell you how you, put your, how you have your hair. Just don't get it in your belay device because you'll have to cut it off to get it out probably. Yeah. I mean, you can just put it, uh, I think a lot of ladies just put it in like their jacket or something if they're repelling. Smart. So. I will um, actually have my hair tied. I just don't have a hair tie on me right now. Cheers. Feel free to subscribe, like if you've enjoyed, and come back for more. All the best to the next. Peace.